Father, we come to thee in the best way that we know how. Yeah. Oh God, we come because we ask of thee for thy love and thy power. We come to thee, oh God, because God, we love you and we honor you and glorify thy holy name. Oh God, this is your day, yeah. a day that you has made. Yeah. Oh God, we pray that the man that's going to stand and preach thy word, oh God, we pray you would touch him yeah. from the head yeah. to the bottom of his feet. Yeah. Let him preach thy word. Mm -hmm. Oh God, we just want to thank you, God, because uh, we was able to wake up this morning clothed in our right minds. We was able to put clothes on our backs. And then God, you started us on our way to the house of worship. As God, as we on our way to the house of worship, oh God, our hearts go out to those, oh Lord, that are on the streets. Those that are sleeping on the benches, well, those that are walking up and down contrary. Yeah. We ask of thee, God, that I will look down on them with grace and mercy. Yeah. And then, God, we ask of thee to visit the hospital. Yeah. Yeah. We ask of thee, O oh God, to visit the nursing home. Yeah. And God, don't forget about the prisons, yeah. because some are innocent and some are guilty. Yeah. So, God, we pray for our our youth, oh God, our young folks, oh God, whose who God, whose minds is just corrupt. 
We pray that you will save our kids, oh God, because God, most of them don't know the way. Most of them don't even know you. So God, we pray you will touch the families of the bereaved families. And God, we pray that you will test those, God, that is going through trials and tribulations and those that are going through war. We thank you, God. We pray you will visit the White House. We pray you will send a revival up through there. And let them know that you are God and God all by yourself. In the name of Jesus, let every heart say amen. 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 And amen. amen. I'm coming, Lord. I'm coming, Lord. I'm coming by myself. But you can look. But don't call the road. Coming by myself, but you can look, you can look for me, but don't call the road. Each 
each and every day. Every day. Gotta keep on moving. Keep on moving. Moving in the right way. Moving in the right way. If I stumble. Step aside. Step aside, don't you block my way. Cause I don't want, I don't want nobody. nobody. 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 Oh. Praise God, for he's worthy to be praised. Most gracious and holy God, we come before you right now. In the mighty name of Jesus the Christ, we come, almighty God, by faith and not by sight. Lord, we come into the throne of mercy, for we know we're able to get it from you. Grace and mercy. Lord, we ask you, almighty God, to examine us, almighty Lord, this morning. That if we brought anything in this place that is not of you, almighty God. We ask, Almighty God, that you bring it to our attention and forgive us of our sins that we may have committed against your name. Lord, we ask you, Almighty God, to open up our hearts that we might receive the very thing that you have in store for us. Lord, let it not land on rocky ground. Let it not land in thorny places. Let it not land on the side of the road, but let it land on good ground. Good ground, Almighty God, that it may reap a harvest of 30 60 and a hundredfold blessing. Lord, as we come today, Almighty God, we ask, O oh Lord, that you will humble us before your throne, that we may be lifted up by your holy hand. Lord, we ask, Almighty God, that those that have come by faith in this place, Lord, that you, ex that you Almighty God, would encourage us, that you, Almighty God, would empower us to do the work in the will of God. Lord, we ask you, Almighty God, if there are others that have joined us in this place, that may not know you for the pardoning of their sins, that don't know Jesus Christ like we know Jesus Christ, that don't know the Father like we know the Father. Lord, I ask, Almighty God, that you touch their heart this morning and you bring them from the outside to the inside, that you bring them into the family of grace. Lord, we ask you, Lord, to help me this morning. Preach the uncompromising word, that I may preach it the way you gave it to me, that I may tell the story one more time, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you, Almighty God, for my minister brothers. I thank you, Almighty God, for the deacons, and I thank you for this congregation, Almighty God. Bless us to keep us together. Keep us together in love. Lord, we ask you to do all these things in your matchless name, which is Jesus Christ. We pray in your name. Amen. 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 If you could, would you turn with me to the book of Matthew, the 26th chapter the book of Matthew, the 26th chapter. Matthew, the 26th chapter, beginning with the 36th verse. Amen. The book of Matthew, 26th chapter, beginning with the 36th verse. And when you get there, could you say amen? Amen book of Matthew, the 26th chapter, beginning with the 36th verse. And the Bible reads in the book of Matthew, the 26th chapter, beginning with the 36th verse. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane. Yes. And he said to the disciples, sit here while I go and pray over there. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee. And he began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed. Yeah. Then he said to them, my sorrow is exceedingly sorrow, <laughs> even unto death. Mm -hmm. Stay here and watch or pray with me. And so he went a little farther and he fell on his face. And prayed, saying, Oh, my Father, yes, if it is possible, mm -hmm. let this cup pass from me. Yeah. 
Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping and said to Peter, what? Could you not watch with me one hour? Yeah. Watch and pray lest or unless you enter into temptation. Yeah. For the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, a second time he went away and prayed, saying, oh, my father, if this cup cannot pass away from me, Unless I drink it, your will be done. And he came and he found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away again and prayed a third time, saying the same words. Then he came to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Behold, the hour is at hand. And the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise. Let us be going. You see, my betrayer is at hand. Yeah. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearing, reading, <laughs> and doing of his holy word. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. In the text, Jesus is preparing himself spiritually to complete what he had been born to do. He had been born to die on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. And so he steals away with his disciples and he goes to a place that he had often went to and that was the garden or the grove, olive grove in Gethsemane. And what is so interesting that he would go to the olive grove is that Gethsemane means the olive press. Uh-huh. He went to the olive press. And so he goes to the olive press in order to pray. Yeah. And I can imagine the smell of oil from the olive press was in the air in the garden. Yeah. And I'm sure it was a reminder of how God the Father extracts the best out of us. For like the olive press presses the olives to extract its oil, God also presses us to get the best out of us. He presses us to bring forth our gifts. He presses us to bring forth our anointing. He presses us to see how far we've come by faith. He presses us and he presses us in order to see who we are. This is what I call Good trouble. All right. Uh, Good trouble. Mm -hmm. Uh, The deceased congressman, John Lewis, Mm -hmm. popularized this phrase, good trouble, trouble. and defined it as being necessary trouble for change. Necessary trouble for change. Amen? Amen. And so this is what I believe, not only is it good trouble, but in the spiritual world, in in our world, it's God's trouble. Uh Not only is it good trouble, but it's also God's trouble. Amen? It's God's trouble because I believe God the Father chooses challenges, trials and tribulations, challenges to fulfill his his purpose in us, uh, that we, we would never choose to go through ourselves. Amen? And so I want to talk to you today about I wouldn't choose it. I wouldn't choose it. So I I can think of a whole lot of things, a whole lot of things that I wouldn't choose to go through. I I, I wouldn't choose it. If if it was up to me, if it was up to me, I I wouldn't choose it. I wouldn't choose. I wouldn't choose. I wouldn't choose to be heartbroken. I, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't choose pain. Uh, I wouldn't choose to suffer. I, 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 I wouldn't. I wouldn't choose. I wouldn't choose to die. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't choose to die. I, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't choose to be betrayed. To 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 be cheated on. To to be lied on. I wouldn't. I wouldn't choose it. But I understand. 
But as long as you are living, these things are a part of life. Whether you want it to happen or not happen, these things are a part of life. To experience the ups and the downs, the trials and the tribulations that come along with life. But, and I understood as I matured in this world, that life is not always what you want it to be, but what it will be. It's not always what you want it to be, it's what it will be. And, and, and what you must and what you must see. No matter how bad I don't want to go through something, it was on my menu for it to be served. Amen. Just like it's on your menu for it to be served. You may not want to go through it, but it's on your menu for it to be served. And these are the things, these are the things in life that you will not choose, but they come with the dish. They come with the dish. I remember I, I was out with my family uh, not too long ago, and they served. Uh, I wanted to get uh, some fish, so I ordered red snapper, and and I thought I was going to get it one way, but they served it another. They put this uh, marmalade on top of it, and and it had a mayonnaise base, and I knew that it was going to be something else later on this evening. If I ate that marmalade. <laughs> I ate that marmalade. If it wasn't gonna go down like lemonade, it was <laughs> something special was gonna happen inside my body. A chemical reaction. Let's put it that way. Would 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 be would be in my body, and I didn't want it to go down that way. And so uh, I asked the I asked the waiter. I said, "Listen, uh, this is a wonderful dish. It's a wonderful dish. However." Uh, there is this marmalade that is on top of the dish that I didn't really think was going to come along with the red snapper. And so the, the, the waiter was so kind and, and, and told me, oh, sir, I, I apologize that uh, you didn't think or you didn't see that it came this way, but the chef <laughs> prepares the red snapper with this his special marmalade. So all that, that, that would order this would enjoy the marmalade. Uh, and, and, and so I said, well, if this is how it is served, then I will try a little bit of it. Uh, but I would prefer uh, not to have marmalade uh, on the red snapper. And so I, I, I was gracious enough, and he was gracious enough for us to uh, experiment with what was happening with the red snapper. Uh, despite my eating the red snapper, I still did not like the marmalade. <laughs> Because it's not how I would have prepared it. It's not how I wanted it. But it was how it was served. Amen. Yeah. And, and such is life. Maybe it's, it's, it's when you come to the doctor's office. And they tell you that there's some things going on with your body. And you, you might have to have surgery. It's not what you would have ordered. But it's what was necessary. If you want to live a lonely life. If you want to correct the things that are going on in your body, there may be need for surgery. Amen? And, and, and so I know like you, I, I, I wouldn't, if it was me, I wouldn't choose surgery. But I understand that to, it is to be a necessary trouble for change. It's a necessary trouble for change. Or maybe you have to get fired. Maybe you have to get fired there in order to be hired. Sometimes it's not a bad thing in order to go through the challenge in order to come out the champion. That's right. All right. All right. All right. All right. There are all sorts of people that go through challenges that come out champions. All right. All right. All right. Uh, and, and, they, and they have endured the challenge in order to result as being the champion. David had to go through a challenge with yeah. Goliath. Yeah. But because he believed God, and he put all of his, 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 his faith, his trust in the Lord. He became a champion from that challenge. Amen. It's, sometimes it's necessary trouble. Uh, it, it, it comes with the dish. In the text, Jesus was about to enter some of the most intense, highly stressed challenges of his life. His, his life was pressed. Uh, uh, the, the 
everything was breaking apart. Yeah. The captain of his disciples, Peter, uh, what Peter was going to deny he ever knew him. Judas would betray him with a kiss. A kiss traditionally shown to show affection was now the identifying mark that he was the mark to be taken. If the disciples would flee and abandon him, all hell was breaking loose. But this is exactly the way he wanted it so that in the end, it was just him and the Father. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Sometimes yeah. challenges are going to challenge the people that are around you. Yeah. Amen, somebody. <laughs> Challenges uh, make clear, and he realized that the closer he came to death, the more alone he would be. So his challenges made it clear who was going to the cross. Yeah. It wasn't Peter that was going to the cross. Right, it wasn't right. John that was going to the cross. It wasn't James that was going to the cross. It wasn't Andrew that was going to the cross. It wasn't Judas that was going to the cross. It was him. He was the one that was to challenge the most. Yes. And it made it clear because challenges make clear what it is. Yes. There's nothing like challenging times to make you prioritize. Yes. There's nothing like it that ma makes you prioritize. That, that, that challenging times can give you clarity about what you need to do. It, 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 it challenging times are the fire that burns everything that won't stand with God off. Yeah. Challenging times will reveal who your friends are. Yeah. Challenging times who, who will reveal who's with you and who's who's not with you, who will pray with you and who will stay up to pray with you. Challenging times right. separate the wheat from the chaff, the yeah. natural from the unnatural, the mature from the immature, the deep-rooted from the surface level. Yeah. All right. Challenging times. I thank God for challenges. Yes, yeah. 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 For it is with challenges that you discover who you are and who you're not. It's the challenge that separates the boys from the men and the well. girls from the women. It's the challenges. And so in the challenge, Peter, he discovered that he was not as strong as he thought he was. He was not as strong as he, as he, as he thought he was. In, in weakness, in weakness, he reverted back to being strength. <laughs> in weakness, he, 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 he was saved, but in his weakness, he became strength. He started cutting off folks' ears because he was strength. <laughs> he started remembering who he was. You know, I'm Peter. You know what I'm saying? And so he started cutting off Folks, body parts. Uh -oh. Amen. He started lying in courtyards yes, sir. when he was pressed by little girls and people yes. to say uh -oh. that, aren't you one of his? Aren't you from Galilee? Aren't you, you have, weren't you with them? Aren't you, aren't you? And he began to be challenged. And here's what is most important, that you have to prepare for challenges like you prepare for anything else. Yes. You have to be prepared. And when you're not prepared, you'll fall. When Jesus was facing his toughest challenge of God, the Father, placing him on him the sins of the world, yes. yeah. it drove him to his strongest place. His strongest place was on his knees. His strongest place was on his knees with communion with the Father. His strongest place. Because on him was past, yeah. present, and future sin. Because the Bible said that he, the, the Father would put it all on him. Yeah. That all of the sins, he, he's the one, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. So everything was put on him. All of your lying, yes. all of your cheating, all of your backbiting, all of your cussing, yeah. all of your fussing, yeah. all of your dissension, all of your wickedness, yeah. all of your murdering. Yeah. Whether you murdered physically, yeah. whether you murdered with your mouth, everything was put on them, all of your covetedness, yes. where you couldn't be satisfied with what God gave you. All of it was put on his yes. back. Everything on the Ten Commandments. Yes. Honoring your mother and your father. Yes. The one that you betrayed. The one that you cussed out. The one that you walked away from. Yes. All of it was put on them. All the past. Yes, from Adam to Abraham yes. to Noah to Moses. Yeah. All of it was put on them. All of the prophets sins was put on them until
until he couldn't take it anymore, until sweat ran from his face and blood ran from his pores. The pressure that came along with the sin. Past, present, and future. Sin was pressing down on him, and he handled it by communing with our Father in heaven. You can't, if, if, if you can't talk to nobody else, you can talk to God. Whenever you're going through trials and challenges, you got to dig deep. You got to dig deep with God to overcome life's challenges. You're not going to win by worrying. Worrying does not make winners. Worrying makes wimps. Worrying does not make winners. Worrying makes folks whose minds are in a wreck. Worrying does not make winners. Prayer makes winners. Those that walk in the word of God makes winners. Prayer, you can't worry yourself into a victory. Prayer makes winners. You're not going to win by avoiding your trouble. You must face it head on. If you want to win, you've got to dig deep. If you want to win, you, you've got to dig deep. You've got to go to God in prayer. Prayer is your weapon. In fact, prayer is your weapon of mass destruction. If you want to annihilate an enemy, go into prayer. Pray with all supplication. Pray the word of God. Remind the Lord what he said. Talk to him about who he is. Talk to him about who you are in him. Talk to him about his greatness. Talk to him about him being God all by himself. Talk to him about who he said. Look, my love covers a multitude of sin. Talk to him. Talk to him. Talk to him. Talk to him. Tell him all about your trouble. Talk to him. Prayer is the dismantler of any weapon formed against you. For it will not prosper if you pray. You got to walk and talk and pray. You got to be on your knees in prayer. You got to ride in your car in, in prayer. You got to sit in your home in prayer. You got to get up with prayer on your mouth. You don't know how many times I woke myself up in prayer. Looked around the house like somebody else was in there. Woke myself up. Praying for the Lord to do just what he said he would do. Praying that God's word still stands strong. Praying that the Lord, I remind him, he said, Lord, you said in your words that you're not like a man, that you should lie, nor like the son of man, that you should change your mind. Do what you said you would do. Prayer, prayer, prayer changes things. Prayer is your weapon. Prayer is your place of rejuvenation and restoration. Prayer changes your attitude. If your attitude is messed up, go into prayer. Go into praise. Go into worship. Till your attitude becomes like God's attitude. Prayer. You've got to dig deep. You must have. When I look, look at deep, I give it an acronym. Deep is deliberate effective and engaging prayer. In order for you to have victory, you have to go deep. You have to go deliberate. You have to go uh, be effective. You have to be engaging with the Lord. You have to have conversation with him. You have to go back and forth. Let God tell you about yourself and you talk to God about himself. Sometimes it's not going to be balanced. Sometimes God is going to tell you some things that you don't want to hear, but he's trying to do it because he loves you. Nobody loves you like God loves you. He can tell you about yourself. You might have to cry sometime, but he's telling you about yourself so that you can get up and pick yourself up and move forward. you got to dig deep. You have to be deliberate. You have to be moving the effectiveness of the word. The effectual prayers of the righteous avail it much. The effectual prayers of the righteous. How are they effectual? Because you tell God what he said. If you don't know his word, you can't remind him. Right. This is why pastor says, 
uh, to make disciples. You got to learn. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Why are you falling to challenges? Because of the word. You got to have the word in you. Amen, somebody. The Bible tells us that he separated out of the 12 disciples, a few of them. He separated out Peter and James and John. And he took with him them to pray. And he, when he took with them a, long, a ways off to pray, the Bible says he began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed. He took with him three out of the twelve in order to go with him to pray with him and mostly for themselves. He took with him sons in order to go and pray when he was sorrowful and deeply distressed. Listen, not everybody needs to see you broke. You can't, you can't take everybody into that place. You can't take everybody into that space. Because some folks will use that to, to, uh, against you. They will use your words in prayer against you. They'll use it as ammunition to tear you down. Yeah. Uh, they will use it uh, because, the, because they don't realize that they're operating for the devil. That's why Jesus had to tell Peter. He said, listen, Peter, Satan, get thee behind me. Peter, I know you mean well. Peter, I know you're trying to save my life, but you forgot I was born to die. Yeah. Unless I die, you can't be saved. Yeah. Yeah. Unless I die, you can't be redeemed. Yeah. You have to use discernment when folks are around you at your most vulnerable time because not everybody that walks in is your friend. I said the last time I was here with you, not all, not all skin folk are kin folk. Not everybody. Not everybody can be with you in your most vulnerable hour. You got to leave some folk behind and say, y'all y'all sit here and y'all pray. Peter, James, John, y'all on me. Let's go in. He, he, he trusted that they would, he, he, he knew what was going to happen with Peter. So he said, Peter, listen, before anybody get puffed up, before if the pastor asks you to come in and pray with them, or if I ask you to come in, or if anybody asks you to come in and pray, before you get puffed up, you got to realize that Jesus Christ knew that Peter was going to fall. He says, Peter, this ain't for me. This is for you. You need to gear up. Come on. Or you're going to deny me three times. I'm bringing you in closer to me so that you'll pray for yourself. I'm bringing James in. You pray for yourself. I'm bringing John in because you're going to be in Caiaphas' house back behind the corner watching what's going on. You need to pray for yourself. What is happening between me and the Father is already good because I know how to get a prayer through. <laughs> I don't need you to get my prayers through. <laughs> I know how to get a prayer through. I know what the will of the Father is. And that's why I said, not my will, but thy will be done. Not everybody needs to see you broken. They may misinterpret your tears for weakness instead of power. Listen, listen, the last person I want to get in a fight with is with somebody that, 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 somebody that cries when they fight. <laughs> yeah, if y'all ain't never been in a fight, y'all probably, listen, let me explain. When somebody, when a man or a woman is so upset that they start crying, they can't control their emotions no more. Listen, listen, listen. You better run. You better run. <laughs> listen. <laughs> hey, baby. Listen. Listen. Uh, uh, you don't want to fight nobody that's crying. Uh, 
that, 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 that person will kill you. <laughs> yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll kill you. They'll, they'll kill you. They'll kill you. I, listen, uh, all that pent up anger, that emotion, that adrenaline, no, sir. No, sir. No, ma'am. I don't want none of that smoke. I'm here to tell you. I don't want none of that smoke. Because when somebody crying, you got to be like, they trying to kill me, so I'm about to kill them. Now we both in jail. <laughs> One dead. <laughs> One sir. And you don't want this. Listen, listen. That, that incredible Hulk anger. <laughs> when somebody tell you you wouldn't like me when I'm angry, believe them. Believe them. Believe them. You, you wouldn't like me when I'm, when I'm angry. You better, you, you better believe them. You're right. <laughs> you know. And so I, I read somewhere. I read somewhere that, that, that Jesus anguished. It had nothing to do with the fear of men or the physical torments of the cross. He wasn't on his face before the Father sweating blood because he was afraid. Listen, he was sorrowful for within hours the full cup of wrath against sin. God was, in other words, what God said he would do against sin, he did it to his son. Come on. You understand that? What God, God says, my word shall not come back void, but will accomplish what it's been sent out to do. If I said this is the penalty for sin, so it shall be. Why? Because heaven and earth was written and responded and was created on his word. What we have by faith was written and established on his word. And so he had to put in place somebody that could handle the stress. Somebody that could handle the punishment. Somebody that could handle the discipline. Man cannot handle what is divine. He had to put something divine in man in order to handle it in the name of Jesus. He, 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 he was sorrowful for within hours the full cup of wrath against him would be would be his and his alone to drink. The beads of sweat commingled with blood, it, it, it dropped from his pores. The Bible says, surely, he was born our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we have seen him, we believe that he was stricken by God. We believe that he was being punished by God and, and afflicted by God. But he was wounded, the Bible says, for our transgressions. <laughs> and he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement, the discipline, the punishment for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, by his beatings, by his blood that ran, that ran red from his body, by his stripes we are healed. The Lord had laid on him the iniquity of us all. Everything, every sin that would have kept you out of being with him for eternity in peace, God put it on his son. He was your substitute. What, what, what you should have got, what you deserve, the Lord, the Father put it on his son. That whosoever would believe in him should not perish because of their sins and go into a burning hell. But whosoever would believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The Bible says, Jesus said, my soul, my soul is, is, is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Stay here and watch with me. In other words, pray with me. Jesus was not asking for them to pray for him. Pray for yourself. But here's the thing. Jesus also knew that by close proximity of the disciples to him, that they would be challenged in ways they've never been challenged before. Did you know that you can experience wrath just because you are righteous by association? Let me explain. Satan will attack you for interrupting his, his assault on somebody else. <laughs> Let me put it in terms we can understand. Have you ever seen somebody who's great get in a fight? And you jumped in and said, hey, hey, wait a minute. And somebody jabbed you and your kids? The 
punch was never meant for you. But because you were in close proximity, you got jabbed in the jaw. Satan, will, you can be helping somebody and then an attack. You could get in the winds of that attack. God will preserve you in the attack, but you feel the brunt of the attack. It's just like it was with the disciples that the attack, they weren't going to the cross, but because they were in close proximity, they had to do things. They had to turn street. They had to do things they would normally do. And so because they were in close proximity, their lives were threatened as well. Come on. Close proximity. See, the Bible says the sins of the world were on Jesus, and he was paying the wage, for the wages of sin is death. Jesus was paying the wage, but Peter, James, and John were going to catch the residue. All right. Sometimes you can catch the residue by going in and helping somebody else, but don't you worry about it. God is with you. You may run in and rush into the burning building, but God is with you. You may come out and you may go into the fire, but you may come out smoky. That means God is with you. You could have died in the fire, but you just came out smoky. That that, that means God is with you. Sometimes there's residue that falls on you while you're fighting in the fight for somebody else. Amen? Amen. I've never been on a fight so close that I hadn't been punched, but when God is blessing you, And when God is moving in your life, he expects you to meet the challenge. Amen, somebody. You see, God is with you, but he expects you to meet the challenge. You see, I didn't didn't choose it. Some of the battles that I've faced in my life, I didn't didn't choose it. But I had to go through it. I didn't choose it. But God chose me to go through it. I didn't choose it. But I found out that the word of God, the word of God brings trouble. Can I talk to you about your Bible? Go ahead. In the Matthew 13, it, 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 the Jesus is talking about the parable of the sower. And I've read that 50 million times, but there's a nugget in there that had, had, had eluded me for some years. And I want to want you to hear it. The Bible says in Matthew 13, 20 through 21, but he who received the seed on stony ground, this is he who hears the word. And immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself. Come on. So he endures only for a while because there is no root. And then it gets to the good. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, immediately he stumbles. In other words, because you have the word of God in you, trials and tribulations find you. You wonder why you catch in hell. Trials and tribulations find you. <laughs> Satan is trying to shake the word out of you. He's trying to get you to give up on God. He's trying to get you to put down your gloves. He's trying to get you to tap out because you have the word. But if you hold on to the word, if you hold on to your change come. God will make sure that you understand that his word shall be fulfilled. You got to hold on to God's word. You're in trouble because of what you're carrying. You're carrying faith. You're carrying the word. You're carrying hope. You're in trouble because of what you're carrying. And because who God is in you. Because I'm a child of God. I understand that I'm a target to be tested. Jesus understood that, that, that he was born with a target on his back. He was born to endure challenges that men could not handle. He was born to suffer unspeakable pain, but he still asked in prayer, Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. What was Jesus saying? He says, when Jesus stated, if it is possible, when Jesus stated, if it is possible, it let us know that this way that was prepared for him was designed by his father. Mm -hmm. I want you to get this. It was designed by his father. The cup, what was in the cup and who would receive it was determined by God. 
When he said, let this cup pass from me, it was like Peter had it. He said, I can't handle it. John had it. I can't handle it. James handled it. I can't handle it. Andrew handled it. I can't handle it. And it came to Jesus. The cup that was prepared for nobody else but Jesus. Do you understand me? Jesus didn't choose the cross. God our Father chose it for him. Because he says, Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. But then he followed, he said, not my will. Oh, this is the answer. Not my will, but thy will be done. If this is the way it has to go down, Father, I accept the challenge. If this is the way it must be, Father, I accept the challenge because where I am, there you are also. Father, you are near me. You said you would never leave me nor forsake me. If the challenge has been handed to me, it's because you, th- you know I can handle it. Am I preaching to somebody in here? If the challenge has been handed to you, it's because God said, I prepared you to handle it. And if you try to handle it in your flesh, you will fail. But if you handle it in Christ Jesus, you will pass. I'm raising somebody else's babies. You can handle it. I'm I'm, I'm praying for a husband that's not saved. You can handle it. I'm praying for a wife that steps out on me. You can handle it. God can do, can change anybody, anywhere, anytime. The challenge is not for them. The challenge is for you. He took the cup. This is a direct correlation between the moment he was in and the second of four cups of wine in the Passover. In the Passover, there are four cups of wine. We read about only one cup in the Bible. It's an abbreviated version, but there's four cups. There are four cups. The first cup is a cup of blessing of thanksgiving, which we see in the Bible where he says he raised a cup and he gave thanks. That's the first cup. The second cup is a cup of wrath. That's the cup he was on. Because in the Passover, he raised one cup. He said, "This is uh, we thank God for this. He says, I ain't going to drink no more with you until I drink it with you in the kingdom of God. And then he put the cup down. Because he knew the second cup yeah. was the cup of wrath that he was about ready to enter into. That's why he said, let this cup pass from me. Because I don't want the wrath that's in this cup. What was in the cup? It was everything that God promised he would do to the enemies of God. Everything was in the cup. That he said he would do to the enemies of God. And Jesus had to endure it. Because if he didn't, we all would be suffering under the judgment of God. So he said, I love them so much. Father said, you you love them. I love them. For God so loved the world that he gave his only. That whomsoever would believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting. For God so loved, he said, I sent my son. That everything I said I was going to do against my enemies are going to fall on the back of my son. By his stripes, we are healed. Jesus didn't choose the cross. God our Father chose it for him. What you're going through was chosen for you. Everything that you're going through was chosen for you if you're walking with the Lord. Some of us say, I wouldn't wish that on the dog. Good. Because it's not meant for the dog. It's meant for you. (laughs) The dog trying to get rid of you because you don't have feed them half the time. But anyway. (laughs) Anyway, I ain't going to talk about folks and their dogs in the backyard kicking up dust on chains. Don't talk about folks' dogs. You may have a dog in your purse right now. I don't know. (laughs) I wouldn't wish that on the dog. The dog has his own problem. And you got yours. Amen? Amen. Amen. There are some things that only God has the choice. There are some things that only God has the choice. We know this because Jesus repeats after asking for an alternative redemptive method. 
He says, not my will, but thy will be done. God has the choice of when Jesus returns and his reign is king of kings. Did you know that? For the Bible says, but concerning that day or that hour, this is Jesus saying this, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the son, but only the father. There are certain things that's only the father's choice. Why would God choose to allow his son to die? For the Bible says, for without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. He had to shed blood. He had to die. Or there would be no remission of sin. The Bible says, according to the law, almost all things are purified with blood. That's why he had to die. And he also says, for it is not possible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away the sins of the world. It takes a man for a man, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. It took a man. And the Bible also says, and as it is appointed for men to die once, he had to die. For he became a man. The son became a man. For it was appointed for man to die for once. But after this, the judgment of Christ was offered once to bear the sins of the world. That's why he had to die. You wouldn't have chosen this, but the psalmist says, it is good for me that I was afflicted. That I might learn my stature. It was necessary trouble. You wouldn't choose it. You wouldn't choose the heartache, but God chose it for you. You wouldn't choose the pain, but God chose it for you. You you wouldn't choose the loss, but God chose it for you. You wouldn't choose the financial stress, but God chose it for you. Everything God chooses is to draw you closer to him if you're willing to come closer to him. He says, if if you come close to me, I'll come close to you. It draws you closer. But because God loves you, he chooses challenges that drive you to your knees. Your knees bleed. Your knees bleed. Your knees bleed. bleed. I want to stand. Your knees bleed. I want to lay on my side. Your knees, please. Oh, Lord, I I just want to drive your knees, please. Lord, I I just need to, your knees, please. I need to drive you to your knees because that's where your power is. Your knees, please. That's where he drives you to. And he'll keep you there till you realize that this can only be overcome by a closer walk with him. You want it to go away. You want to live above and not beneath. Can I tell you something? But until you let go of the bottom, because I said I want to be the head and not the tail, the top and not the bottom. But until you let go of the bottom, you'll never rise to the top. You got to let go of the bottom. You got to let go of yourself so that you can rise to the top. Jesus didn't choose it. But the Bible says, but he learned obedience unto death. You've got to learn to obey the commands of God in order to walk in the ways of God. Let me say that again. You've got to learn how to obey the commands of God in order for you to walk in the ways of God. God's commands are different than his ways. Let me explain. God's commands are like telling you directions how to ride a bike or train wheel. Eventually, you say, I got it. Yeah. And the Lord said, go on with your bad self. <laughs> and you're riding the bike, and he's, and while you're riding, he take one wheel off, one training wheel off. <laughs> then he take another training wheel off. Come on, then he says, now, now, now pop it, pop it, pop it like you know how to do it. <laughs> and you pop back, and you do a wheelie on it. Because you go from commands to knowing God's ways. And God says, I can release you because my ways are inside of you. So I can release you from these baby steps so you can take grown folks steps. Jesus didn't choose it, but he learned obedience. It was necessary. A man had to die. Not any man, but God. A man had to die. Not any man, but a man born of a virgin, baptized in water, filled with the Holy Spirit. Um, Not any man, but God's man, a man that was able to be beaten beyond recognition and still remain standing and carry a cross to the hill of Golgotha. A man, God God said, I need a man uh, after my own heart. God's man, a man that can carry away the sins of the world. I need a man, a superman that, that can do things that no other man can do. I need a man that's able to understand exactly what my children are talking about. I need a man. 
that wouldn't choose him, but allow themselves to be chosen. And I'm closing. There are some things that God says, I'm not going to move it out of your way because it's, it was designed exactly for you. Folks complain about, why am I always going through the same thing? Pass the test. Repetition in education is to create redundancy of understanding. Repetition is key to education. I've seen this before. I've done this before. What did you do when you, when you saw it before? What did you do when, you, when, you, when it was in your place? Did you do this or did you do that? What did you do? The same God of yesterday is the same God today. Yes, sir. What you did to get over yesterday, God says, I'm giving you deeper today. My question to you is, will you go deeper? Come on. Come on. Or will you complain about staying the same? <laughs> will you go deeper? Or will you stay exactly the way you feel comfortable being? Or will you go deeper and be challenged by God? Will you go deeper?